Harry is just 51 years old and has been feeling fatigued and generally lousy for the last three months. He has been noticing fever and chills and just last week cut himself shaving and did not stop bleeding for half an hour. Feeling worried, Harry took himself to the GP to get to the bottom of it. Harry's GP explains that these symptoms are cause for concern and she would like to follow through with some important tests such as blood examination and a bone marrow biopsy if the results were abnormal. Three weeks later, Harry receives the news that no one wants to hear. He has acute myeloid leukaemia. His journey is one that another 3,200 people will embark upon this year alone. It is difficult and confronting, but it is estimated that 80 to 90% of these cases will recover after treatment. Let's break it down. Leukemia involves red blood cells and white blood cells of our body. We have some very special guests to help us explain this. This is a white blood cell. Its role is to defend the body from pathogens that can make us sick. There are lots of different types of white blood cells, but we'll get to that later. This is a red blood cell. Its role is to transport oxygen around the body to keep us alive. Let's see them in action. Here, we can see the pathogen has entered the bloodstream. Our body's natural defense system kicks in and the white blood cell's job is to attack the pathogen and get rid of it altogether. Hemopoiesis is a process that produces the formed elements of blood. In a child, this process takes place in the spleen and liver whereas in a healthy adult, hemopoiesis takes place in the red bone marrow, found in the epiphysis of long bones such as the humerus and femur, flat bones such as the rib and cranial bones, and the vertebrae and in the pelvis. Within the red bone marrow, hemopoietic stem cells called hemocytoblasts divide to produce various blast cells. There are two broad families of blood cells known as the myeloid and lymphoid lineages. It all starts with a hemopoietic stem cell. This cell has the ability to proliferate into a common lymphoid progenitor and, and a common myeloid progenitor that will go on to form the lymphoid and myeloid lineages respectively. Lymphoid stem cells will develop into three types of white blood cells, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and natural killer cells. Myeloid stem cells develop into erythroid colony forming units which proliferate into erythrocytes. There are red blood cells. Megakaryocytes form the platelet component of our blood and the basophil colony forming unit will go on to form the basophils. Next we have the eosinophil colony forming unit developing into eosinophils and granulocyte monocyte colony forming unit into our neutrophils and monocytes. Lymphoid leukemia exclusively involves the lymphoid lineage of hemopoiesis. In this lineage, T cells kill parasites, viruses and cancer cells and produce cytokines which control the process of blood formation. B cells make the antibodies that target microorganisms and natural killer cells actively scan the body to locate and kill abnormal cells. The myeloid lineage produces our platelets, red cells and white cells eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils and monocytes. Platelets are cellular fragments that play an important part in the clot formation process by travelling to the site of injury, sticking together and stopping any bleeding that may be occurring. Red blood cells or erythrocytes contain haemoglobin which transports oxygen around the body from the lungs that will be then used as energy. Myeloid leukemia has the presence of abnormal granulocytes which are a type of white blood cell that contain neutrophils that kill fungi and bacteria, eosinophils which kill parasites, basophils work with neutrophils to fight infection, lymphocytes defend the body against specific toxins or pathogens and monocytes that work with both neutrophils and lymphocytes to fight infection. They also act as scavengers to remove dead tissues and help with antibody production. A 
According to principles of pathophysiology, leukemia can be defined as malignant disorders of the bone marrow involving blocked or impaired differentiation of hemopoietic cells. This leads to the presence of numerous tumour cells in the circulating blood. This basically means that the body is producing an increased number of immature or abnormal leukocytes. This suppresses the production of normal cells such as red blood cells, platelets, and mature or normal white blood cells. Acute leukemia generally has an abbreviated survival time with a rapid onset. These cells involved with acute leukemia are undifferentiated or immature. Chronic leukemia has a longer survival time with a gradual onset of the disease. Chronic leukemia can be characterized by mature cells functioning poorly. Let's just focus on Harry once again. Harry has a type of myelogenous leukemia. This is referring to the myeloid lineage, including platelets, erythrocytes, eosinophils, neutrophils, basophils, and monocytes. For Harry, his body uses all of its available nutrients and energy in order to produce the leukemic cells, which ultimately decreases the production of all the other cell types in the myeloid lineage. With less of these important cell types, Harry would experience a range of pathophysiologic consequences. These symptoms might include increased fatigue, shortness of breath, easy bruising and bleeding, and an increased risk of parasitic viral and bacterial infections. If we consider the cell types that have been depleted, these symptoms are easy to match. Harry had mentioned he had been feeling fatigued and lousy and that it also took him a long time to stop bleeding when he cut himself shaving. When his blood tests came back, they showed a decreased number of neutrophils. This condition is called neutropenia. It may explain Harry's fever and chills. The test also showed a decreased number of circulating platelets, known as thrombocytopenia. Due to a lack of platelets, Harry's ability to form a clot and stop bleeding takes longer than normal. Stem cell transplant is a form of treatment often used for leukaemia and offers patients the best chance at recovery. Although there is no exact known cause for leukaemia, research is ever developing. Understanding what causes leukaemia and finding a cure is on the way. <laughs>